Hello and welcome to this Wellington 18 minute short. I'm Baz Kinder, Commercial Director of Wellington and I've been working with Microsoft PPM and PMOs now for slightly over 10 years and in today's session I'm going to showcase some of the agile functionality that's now available within Microsoft Project for the web. Before that however we'll start with a quick intro to Wellington and the latest version of Project. I'll then provide a brief overview of some of the agile capabilities that are now available within the solution before jumping into a live demo. So get comfy, we're going to be here for the next 18 or so minutes and uh, let's talk about Wellington. Well, we've been around since 2001 and we are headquartered in Windsor, but we've also got offices in Ireland and Spain. And as you can see, we've managed to collect quite a few accreditations over the last 20 or so years. In particular, we're a Microsoft Gold certified PPM project partner. We're also an APM accredited training provider that's the Association for Project Management. We're also an Axelos consulting partner, meaning that we do provide P3M3 maturity assessments. And importantly, we're an approved Crown Commercial Service supplier, meaning that public sector organizations in particular can procure this very easily. And we offer a wide variety of services that span consultancy, technology, and training with a focus on helping our customers to improve their PPM capability, which is something that we actually guarantee. You can read more at wellington.co.uk, so please do follow that link and have a look through the website. And here's a small selection of some of the organizations we've worked with over the last 20 or so years. Quite a few case studies are available on the website, so please do go along to that link and check them out. So let's talk about the newish Microsoft Project, which has been around since 2019 and evolving quite nicely ever since, if I do say so myself. And from our perspective, if you're looking for a solution to power your PMO or to support any of the teams that are running projects, then this is definitely the solution you should be exploring, especially if you're a Microsoft house and using M365. And by adopting Project for the Web, you're getting access to a solution that's going to benefit from the latest features and innovations. And there is a publicly available roadmap you can access online that lists out all of the incoming features. And it is quite an extensive list. Besides that, you also get access to a shinier user interface that's quite a departure, I would say, from traditional Microsoft Project Desktop app and Project Online. And I've said this previously, but it essentially looks like the love child of Microsoft Planner and Project. All in all, a very modern and incredibly scalable solution at the same time. Uh, Project for the Web also offers integration with Microsoft 365 Groups, which makes it so much easier to collaborate with other project team members. And lastly, the new project, it's also designed to be extended through the Microsoft Power Platform, specifically Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power BI. And that is something that I covered on a very recent webinar, which was titled A Beginner's Guide to Project for the Web. So do go along to our YouTube channel and check that out. But for now, let's uh, talk about how Microsoft Project for the Web can help support agile ways of working. And I hope you like this slide because it took me a while to uh, come up with the uh, post the notes. But uh, since being launched back in 2019, Project has offered a Kanban board as standard. And some of you might already have come across that. But recently, Microsoft rolled out a brand new sprint view, which is great because many organizations and teams are continuing to adopt agile or hybrid approaches to managing projects. And actually, I know quite a few clients that run projects using a Wagile approach, which is the obviously the combination of the two. And uh, Project for the Web in that particular scenario is very well suited. So through the Agile features in Project, just to summarize, you and your teams, you can go in, you can create tasks, you can prioritize them in their backlogs. You can also define sprints and their date ranges. You can also move tasks between the sprints and their respective backlogs. And of course, you want to visualize all of the data and using some of the inbuilt charts and even Power BI, you can start to visualize that data and bring it to life. And rather than just talk about it, let's now see it in action. But before we do, I'm going to highlight really quickly that Project for the Web does offer a lightweight agile experience. And if you are working on larger scale uh, software development projects, then you'd probably want to look at Azure boards, which natively supports user stories, bugs, features, epics, and a few more elements as well. But with that being said, let's now dive into Project for the Web and check out some of the latest Agile capability. And here we are inside of Project Home within Microsoft 365. 
and pretty soon I'll be opening up this project to demonstrate some of the Agile capability. But before that, I wanted to demonstrate how easily you can go in and create new projects. So in order to do so, click on this button and this gives us a couple of options to first of all create a brand new project. We can either create something from scratch, so a blank canvas, or we can import in a Microsoft Project Desktop MPP file, which many of you might have uh, sitting around. Uh, that's what you're currently possibly using. Besides that, you can also start your projects with a template. And in fact, that's what I did earlier on today. I've used this template to pre-populate all of the data inside of this plan, which I'll be using now to demonstrate some of the Agile capability. So this is my plan, it's loaded up. You'll see that the project title has already been set to BK Software Development. We then have a variety of uh, menu items along the top. We can view the grid, which is a very traditional waterfall focused view. We also then have the timeline, which again is pretty traditional waterfall as evident through the uh, depiction there of a GAN chart. But we have the board, which is where I'll be going in a few minutes. We then have charts, which are inbuilt to Project for the Web, and it's where we can visualize much of the data. And there's a recently launched people view that shows me a breakdown of all the individuals working on my project. It shows me what their workload looks like in this particular initiative that I've got opened up. And it tells me how many tasks are on track, how many falling behind, and how many of those are, well, obviously late as a result. Apart from that, we can go in, apply various filters. We can also look at the group members that make up the project team itself. This, of course, is linked to Microsoft 365 Groups. And if I open up this menu on the far right-hand side, you'll notice that we have various options to be able to export plans out. And that could be in Excel format. We could also export a PDF. We also can, if we've created template projects ourselves, copy them into brand new plans and we can access team files but we also have the ability to open up the project details change the title and you can do that in a couple of ways actually but we can also and when we open up the project details you'll note that we have got the ability to go in and retitle the project should we want to do so we can also um, select the project manager there's already somebody in place we can specify start dates look at percentage complete we can importantly also apply default or custom calendars. So that could either be a calendar that's been specified for the organization generally, or for this particular project, you might want to apply something that's a bit bespoke, and that is also possible. Something that I'm not going to be able to demonstrate today is the ability to also go in and apply individual or resource specific calendars, because you might have people that are working part time, and you want to reflect that when they are being assigned across tasks. And that is something that you can also do. But closing out of this, I'm going to jump across now to the board view, which of course is what you all want to see. After all, this is a showcase of some of the agile capability inside of Project for the Web. The view that I've landed on is the most recently opened view, and that was grouping by bucket. We are going to go through some of the additional views as well. But in terms of what you see, it's very simple. A variety of buckets, all of which contain tasks. Now, I'm going to switch over to a different view, and the view that I'm going to go to is the Sprint view, which is the latest feature that Microsoft have added. It's a very simple premise. We've got a backlog, and as a default, when you first go to the Sprint view and you've not created any Sprint yourselves, all you see is the backlog, and it's then up to you to go in and add the Sprints. But it's really easy to do that. Click on Add Sprint. Uh, let's call this the May. Uh, sprint and let's go in and specify the dates let's jump forward put that in and we'll put the finish date as the last day of May and we'll add the sprint and you'll see but it's going to pop up and we're not going to populate it only because of the time constraints we've already got a variety of uh, sprints in place February March and April and each one of these cards as I mentioned earlier represents a task within the system. So we'll click into one of these cards and that then opens up this detailed task information view. And right at the very top, we can see the task title, which we have got the ability to go in and modify. We can see who's working on the task and we have got the ability to add multiple resources. We also have the ability to add a custom label. And in this example, the label's been used to indicate the type of resource that's needed to work on the task before a resource has actually been assigned. 
We can, of course, go in, add detail notes as I'm doing so there. And uh, we also have the ability to specify start dates, uh, the duration of the tasks, percentage complete. We can re-specify um, which bucket the task should sit in. And we've got the ability to set the priority for this specific item as well. These are the default items, so it can either be urgent, important, medium, or low. We can also redistribute the task into a different sprint, should we need to do so. And one of the features that I really like is the ability to define checklists. Because sometimes a task might be quite sizable and there's multiple things that need to be done before you can actually mark it off as being complete. And here you can go in very easily and add an additional checklist items. Uh, we've uh, again got some effort fields here at the bottom and uh, you can also go in and populate custom fields and there's an example of this here. It's a rag field whereby you can go in and set the status of the task in terms of is it on track, is it falling behind or so forth. You can also add dependencies so you can link this task to another task. You can either search for it or in some of the other views you can actually be presented with some tasks that the system thinks you should be dependent upon. We've got the ability to add attachments. This could be something that you're uploading from your laptop. You can also link to a Teams file. You could also connect to an external URL. And there's also a conversation panel that actually comes to life when you are viewing the project in the setting of Microsoft Teams. And if we have time today, we'll jump onto that. If not, uh, that is covered in some of the previous webinars that you will find on our YouTube channel. Okay. So this was the sprint view, the latest view added in my Microsoft. You've also got the ability to go in and apply filters. And uh, I'm not going to spend too long on this because of the time that we have available, but let's say you want to focus on this month's sprint. You can select that item and everything else gets hidden away. So you're getting less clutter on the screen and you can really focus on what needs to be focused on. Let's clear away those uh, filters go back to some of the other views that are you know quite complementary I would say to the sprint view generally. The first one is the bucket view that we saw right at the very beginning. Uh, another view that is quite handy is the assigned to view so you can see who's working on what and we can from these views actually reallocate work if need be. We can also go in look at the progress view which is one of the original views and uh, I think it's probably one of the most simplistic and this gives you three default buckets not started in progress and completed. And the premise is really easy. Once something is completed, let's say, all you need to do is click and drag and drop it into the relevant bucket and the status gets updated. Beyond this, we can also group by finish date, by label, by priority. So you can see there's a multitude of options available. And what's really nice, and I did talk about many customers operating a WADGEL model, and what's nice about Project for the Web is that the project is presented through different lenses. So even though the underlying data always remains the same, you might have some people that prefer the grid view. That's how they want to go in and view the tasks or maybe provide updates. You've got others that would like to see a, um, a traditional Gantt chart view, which is essentially what this is. And you can see that it's fully interactive. And then you have those that are agile focused and they want to work using a Kanban view. And again, all of these bases are covered through Project for the Web. And once you've started collating all of this data, of course, one of the things that you want to do is to be able to visualize it really quickly. And through the inbuilt charts, you can do just that. So these charts are relatively simple, but very informative. And you can, in the same way as I demonstrated on the Kanban view earlier, go in and apply filters and again, focus on the data that is most important to you. The final thing that I'll demonstrate here is the people view. Not dissimilar to what we've already looked at, and I think I've already got a filter applied I have. Let's clear all of the filters. This gives me a breakdown of all of the team members on this specific uh, project, and I can see how many tasks they've got allocated and what the status of those tasks is. And again, we can go in and apply different views. So we can uh, get rid of a compact view, see a bit more detail, we can reapply it. And you can also go in and look at the items that have already been completed and ticked off. So although the focus for today is very much on the agile functionality within Project for the Web, and uh, I have already signposted that we've got other webinars that maybe provide a bit more of a rounded, deep dive view around Project for the Web, one of the points that I did want to very quickly make before we wrap up 
is around the extensibility that is available through the Microsoft Power Platform. So Project for the Web in isolation, incredibly good, and it's really a step above using Microsoft Planner and certainly a huge step above using Microsoft Excel. But for power users like PMOs that want to capture additional detail, extending it through the Power Platform and particularly Power Apps and Power Automate and Power BI, you can get views like the ones that I'm about to demonstrate. And I'm going to keep this really, really brief. This is the Accelerator Plus Power App that we've built. So this is a starter for 10 for many of our customers. And what I'm going to do is go into the same project actually, what we've been working on so far. You'll notice that it's blank because not much of the data has been populated. After all, I did I only create this project uh, a couple of days ago and I've not really looked at it since, but uh, I'm going to go into edit and this gives you a flavor of some of the additional elements that we can wrap around Project for the Web when you get it as a standalone solution. So again, project title being displayed. We can also open up some project details on the right hand side. Beneath that, we've got a workflow. So if you wanted to implement a bit of governance workflow into your project and ensure that people are doing the things that they should be doing before requesting permission to move on to the next stage, tick, you can do all of that. Uh, you've also got various forms that can be completed through the project's life cycle. Many of these things are standard items. So yes, you want to capture financials. You might want to do some detailed resource uh, allocation and planning. Again, you can do one of those items. We've got a full complement there of all the raid logs and other management artifacts. But in fact, one of the things that I should have shown you right, the get go should have been the task view because this is the same plan that we've been working on all along. And this very much sits at the heart of the Accelerator Plus. This is driving all of the scheduling information and it's fully editable. So again, that was a very quick look at uh, some of the additional value add you can get by extending Project for the Web. Uh, but for now, I'm going to jump back to my presentation and we'll get this wrapped up. So let's talk about next steps. And I've said this a few times, because of the time constraints of the Wellington 18 minute short, there's only so much we can show you and I'm sure you've got questions. I'm sure you want to see more. So for that purpose, if you would like to get a deep dive demo for yourself, for your team, all you need to do is drop me an email using the details that are coming up. And for those of you that have uh, maybe decided that a project for the web is probably the way that you want to go, but you want to understand what an implementation might look like within your organization. Again, we can provide a uh, PPM solution envisioning workshop, which is a bit more detailed and we step through your current situation, your objectives, your priorities. And between us, we then define a implementation roadmap and give you a tailored proposal based upon your high level requirements. And for anything else, what you need to do is get in touch and talking about anything else, something that might be relevant to you, um, saying as the topic of the uh, hour is very much agile project management. We do provide a APM accredited agile project management training course which has been designed to address the growing need for project managers, program managers, and PMO teams to gain a thorough understanding of best practice, agile ways of working. Again, lots of details on the screen, but do head over to the Wellington website to learn more and to see upcoming course dates. So uh, everyone, thank you very much for your time today. Here are my contact details. If you would like to get in touch, all you need to do is drop me an email to baz.kinder at wellington.co.uk. Please do look me up on LinkedIn. You can either search for me or you can scan that QR code and it'll take you straight to my profile. And whilst you are on LinkedIn, do give Wellington a follow. And of course, this video alongside many others do appear on our YouTube channel. So that's youtube.com forward slash Wellington PPM. So do go along, find the channel and subscribe and ding that notifications bell. But I hope you all found this really useful and thank you very much for your time.